What's up everybody? Uh, I guess we're gonna try cooking with scruff. I'm gonna make my meatloaf. I'll post the base recipe in the description, but when I make meatloaf, it's I have a base recipe and then I just substitute whatever I need because I'm always out of something. So, uh, let's get started and we'll, uh, we'll wing it as we go. All right, so uh, you get yourself a pound and a quarter, pound and a half of roast beef or roast beef ground beef. I try to get the leaner stuff just so there's less fat to deal with. Um, it can make the meatloaf a little greasier and it kind of floats in the grease sort of if it's too greasy, but you know, get what you got. And from there, I'll just start adding the stuff. I usually add the easy stuff and then the messy stuff last. Uh, bacon bits. All my measurements are approximate, but I have made it per exact measurements and everything was fine. So bacon bits or shredded bacon or whatever, like just something. If you got extra meat, if you want that extra flavor, it's about a half a cup of those. I like putting cheese in mine, so I have a uh, Italian 5 blend Whoop. this way. Put about a half a cup in there. Or something, you know, whatever works out. Meatloaf is not an exact science at all. Alright, uh, I want to... I would normally put uh, half to three quarter a cup of uh, chunky salsa in, but I don't have any salsa, so we're going to do about a half a cup of marinara sauce, and then we'll make pizza fries a bunch this week, and some spaghetti, and ravioli mofo to use it up. I have Montreal steak seasoning. You want about a teaspoon or a tablespoon or two of that. Same. I would normally have freshly diced garlic, but I'm out. Um, so, put about two tablespoons of that in there. There's a cat. Uh, fresh pepper. You want about a tablespoon, you just grind it for a little while, you know what I mean? And I know there is pepper in Montreal State seasoning, but I like freshly ground pepper if I can. If not, just whatever pepper you got. But then again, this is a, you know, season to your taste. But you definitely want to add some sort of seasoning. Otherwise, it is just a plain ass burger. Uh, I also add this if I don't have onions, and I usually add this even if I do have uh, diced onions. And yes, I just use my teeth to open that. And let's see, you want half to three quarter cup of like grated Parmesan. Whatever you got, cheese, that's about three quarters of a cup. Call that good. And let's see, we've got that panko. If you have uh, breading, about three quarter cup of that. That leaves us with milk like whatever milk you got it doesn't matter I use almond milk works better with me uh, you want about ooh, you want to open it and start off with about half to three quarter cup remember you can add more but you can't take it out right, let's go ahead oh let's add our two eggs one or two since I'm using more than a pound of ground beef I tend to like to use two eggs. Put those in there. Come on. Boop. Put these over here. Let's 
save that for later. Yes, it has raw egg in it, but it's going. What's going in there, which is the topping, is going to be cooked, so that won't have any any bearing on it. So let's add our ground beef last. The reason we add this last is canal, because canal, because now it's time to get dirty. That's <clears throat> still a little cold. Not quite frozen. That should be fine. And now we just. Kind of looking for a, not a runny, obviously, but a thicker texture. Like a little, I'd say a little thinner than just the ground beef on its own. Keep this in the center area. If I don't think I'm going to need any more milk. Just make a big mess out of it, you know. Just make sure it's all thoroughly mixed up. Uh, if your hands are sensitive to cold, like mine are, uh, you can either wear gloves, you can deal with it, or let the meat warm up a little bit more. This is a little cold for me, but that's good and mixed. Let me wash up here. One moment, please. You can just stare at that mess for a second. pre-greased loaf pan that's like a 9 by 5 ish shake, shake, shake. all right let's just ooze that on in there and for those that have asked or may be asking themselves Yes, this is basically just a big-ass hamburger with different seasoning, but what makes the meatloaf the meatloaf, besides being able to smack that ass, uh, is the topping. So go ahead, get this pretty smooth down, because um, you, you don't want the topping running around too much you know what I mean you don't want it to like puddle up and have dry meatloaf oh, that's nice and nice and party yeah. no idea when I'm gonna upload this one may have to bump some other ones who knows we'll see all right set that on the side set that over there right now is a good time to go if your oven's not already preheated, this is a good time. I have a uh, like a countertop oven, the, the Ninja Foodi oven that I use uh, for cooking, but I bake with my gas oven just because that heats up a lot quicker. All right, for topping. Ketchup, mustard of some sort, brown sugar. So, I'm going to start with about three quarter cup of ketchup. About that. About a half a cup of mustard. Has this been opened? It has. About like that. dark brown sugar kind of 
break you off some. This is what really gets the sweetness for the topping, which is very important. That's what makes the meatloaf the meatloaf, is like somewhat of a sweet topping, at least for me. Preheated, but even those need a couple more minutes to really like heat soak the whole oven kind of deal, not just trigger the temperature sensor. So we'll let that go. There is. Brush the lumps out and start stirring. somewhere. There it is again. <clears throat> Your brown sugar can get quite lumpy. The lumps can get kind of hard on you. As far as what you're aiming for with the topping, it's really hard to say. You want it to be a kind of a sweet sweet and tangy um, hence the you know the tomato and the mustard with the sugar and it will change a little bit when you cook it like it matures no oh, that's fucking perfect and you want you don't want to like get cheap on this topping Like you definitely want enough and it's on this stuff you you'll turns out after you make it once or twice and like once you really fine-tune what you're looking for in this topping there will suddenly be no such thing as too much isn't that runny it's fine it's just you know it all depends on the flavor consistency how warmed up it is all right there's that Shiny side up so that it reflects heat from the top. And you are going to cook this for 50 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, what is that? 160 Celsius? I'm not positive. I actually forgot to look that up, but 350 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that is in Celsius. Cook this for 50 minutes at that, and then we're going to take the foil off and um, let it cook for like another 10, 15 minutes to, you know, crust up that, uh, that topping a little bit, kind of cook that up, and then we'll go from there. So I will see you in about 50 minutes. Yeah, sorry. I can just bring you over to the oven. So I got it set for 50 at 350. And about probably 35 minutes or so in, go ahead and just kind of spin it around 180 degrees. Um, so yeah, 
and now I'll be back. Alright, well, I actually bumped that up to the full hour and a half. Um, and I should say something, have said something in the beginning of the video that do not put the foil on the first time you make this. Because it may get too squishy. Uh, you should probably just leave it off the first time. And I was thinking about it, and yeah, most of the time I actually leave it off. I just haven't cooked it in so long, I kind of forgot. And yeah, I use this oven a lot, so it's it gets wiped, but there's still crumbs and stuff. Uh, and you will see little things coming through. That's just like the the beef water coming through the juice. So there's your flip, and we'll check back in another 35 minutes. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let's grab this. And that said 110, but it's 105. <clears throat> All right, so this is what we've got right now. Uh, let's see, let's move it over somewhere else. One second. All right, let's see. Yoop. There's the loaf of meat. We will let this set for like 10 minutes. <clears throat> kind of let it set up some. That's normal, that's good. A little bit of that crustiness on the outside is always good to go. All right, I'll be back in 10 minutes to make that cut. Alright, so the first slice, uh, that's from when I was picking it up. The first slice is always the worst to get out because there's no, no room to work with. But Let's see what we got here. And use that overlap so, you know, stuff falls in. This is what it looks like when it's done. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to watch me eat this, but that seems kind of weird. So I'll just give it a shot and I'll let you know. See, it's pretty hot. It's hot. Got a good consistency there. Like it's soft, but it comes back. It's almost like a wet hamburger. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's damn delicious. Definitely recommend trying this. If you like hamburgers or meat or tangy and sweet stuff, the sauce is really what makes it. Highly recommend. Uh, what I gave you is a good base recipe. It's not super seasoned. It's not spicy or anything. And we can kind of take it and just run with it from there. But I've been making this recipe for I don't know, 25 years. Mm -hmm. See how close we can get up in there. Oh. Almost rolled it off the plate. Yeah, you'll get that sometimes. You just fucking mm -hmm. paint it back on there. It's all good. Can't go wrong with a meatloaf. And it's really good cold, too. Ooh. Pardon me. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll finish the rest of this in a moment. So you're left with that grease in the bottom. Uh, if you make this and you find that it is dry in the bottom when you're done, then you should put the foil back on. 
or put foil on it because you don't want this to dry, get so dry that it just becomes like a giant loaf of puck. So yeah, try it first without the foil. Make sure everything's moist. And if you feel like it is dry, then add foil later for, you know, a whatever amount of time. So, that's uh, our first attempt at an episode of Cooking with Scruff. Let me know in the comments uh, what I could have done better. What I need to do next time, because I ain't never done anything like this. And I get really hungry when I try to do research, so... I'll leave it up to you to try and help me out uh, to see what you want to see. You. All right. So leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you want, and uh, I'll talk at you later. Thanks, and good eating.